One crucial part on any financial independence or security journey is of course keeping our outgoing costs as low as possible. And if you have debt in any form, that's a financial obligation every single month where that money could be used to better effect, to live life on your terms and actually design life as you want it. So in today's video, I want to break down six lifestyle and mindset strategies that I know will see debt go very quickly from your life. Hi there, my name is Jennifer from mamafurfur.com. I make videos all about personal finance, investing and success mindset here in the UK. My passion is to give people financial knowledge that allows them to create life on their terms. That is time and financial freedom that I believe everyone can then choose to work, choose to do their passions, whatever they want for their life. So if you are brand new to my channel, you've stumbled upon this video, thank you for joining me. Please hit that subscribe button. I would love you to follow my channel for the rest of my videos videos and also hit that bell notification button. It means every time I upload, you know as soon as that happens. So today's video is especially important to me. I'm very passionate about people not having financial obligations that they don't choose, that all their money can basically go on the things that brings them joy and value in their life. I have been in that debt cycle before myself with our family. If you're new to my channel, we basically had £24,000 roughly of consumer debt on credit cards. I won't go into the background on how we got that debt, that's covered in other videos, but basically we chose to attack that debt and rather than it taking five or six years that we projected, we actually cut that down to three years, so very quickly. And of course, the amount of money we were paying back every single month on debt, we were then able to use to create life on our terms. We were doing things very differently because of those choices to get rid of those debt. So today especially, I know these strategies I'm gonna give you absolutely work because I have used all of them myself with my own family. If you don't have debt though in your life, these strategies will actually allow you to become more accountable with your money. So be sure to stay all the way to the end. So the first strategy is really to do with mindset of money. And I see people really categorize money or debt as something that should be used to make themselves feel bad or guilty in some way. That negative mindset is incredibly powerful. Our thoughts ultimately influence how you see the world and what you allow yourself to experience. So the moment that we add thoughts into that this debt is bad, that how we spend money is bad, we should feel like we're a bad person. You can see it compounds and seems to grow bigger and bigger till ultimately becomes that dominant thought in your head that you're somehow bad for having this day. The moment that you realize that money is just a resource and actually in the world it's an unlimited resource. It's not something that there's only a certain pile of money for you that you can spend every single month. There's unlimited opportunities to bring money to you to add value to the world. It changes entirely how you see debt. And that's why I want to make this the first strategy that I give you. Money being an infinite resource, of course, is very much different to time, which is our only true finite resource. We have a very limited amount of time. We never know when that will run out, but that's the only real tangible thing that we can say that we have to manage in some way. Money or energy or the opportunities, the experiences that we can have in this world are completely limitless and abundant. Debt really is actually a way to use money, an infinite resource, to manage time. We take out a portion of money, an infinite resource, to actually manage and get back time in our favour. So for example, you want a home, so rather than save up the long term for that home till eventually you have enough, you'll borrow that amount that then means that you can move in that next week or that next month. Month. However, to get that time resource on our side, of course, we pay interest. And often it's the interest, the amount of money that's added on that makes people feel guilty on a bad person. They think of the size of the amount of money and then simply it becomes overwhelming. They'll never be able to attack it. And so when we see that bigger picture, that really money, however we've taken out that day, is so that it has that time advantage for us. We've chosen to pay for something longer term to get it more immediately. You really see the power of that day on you. It's just something that you know you made a choice in that moment. Probably wouldn't choose to keep repeating it in your life. However, it was just a choice you made in that moment. Now with that change in mindset, then you can simply attack it like anything else in your life. If you wanted to improve your health, if you want to improve your money, we have to have a plan in place. And that's really where I'd say we have a plan how to attack that debt so that again, that money, that infinite resource is back in our hands, but also so you get your time back that you're not actually paying it. We're going to pay back the debt, but also we'll use the time to build things that we do want in our life. We're going to pay back the debt, but also use it as a time to build wealth, so create more money in our life. By removing the emotion from 
the date as the first sentence, then we can get that logical plan in place to actually remove it completely from our lives. So what you would do is know your debt, know how much you actually are obligated to different companies, if it's consumer debt or perhaps your mortgage. Write it all down, get familiar with how much interest you're paying, but be detached from any emotion that it'll draw upon you. Then the next step, of course, is we talked about building wealth and how we do that is then creating a small buffer so that we don't then add to more of that debt. The situations that put you into the debt usually felt that like they came out of the blue. We had no choice but to take out the debt. So create a small buffer as your first instance before we start to tackle the debt. Meet your minimum obligations and create perhaps £500 or £1,000 in an account that would be treated as if it was that credit card in the state. So you've got that small buffer so that whatever life brings you, you know you've got instant access to cash rather than relying on a financial institution to give it to you. Really to attack that debt of course we need to also have a budget to know how much is coming into our house and going out. It was really creating a debt management plan that brought about my autopilot money spreadsheet system. So on one particular tab of that system that you can go and check out in my Etsy store, it has a way to actually list your budget on categories that are non-essentials, that are fixed, things that you must pay out every month. And it allowed me really to see what was important and not important and find ways to actually get the most amount of money on our debt every month. And with that, I was able to actually create a debt management plan where I knew the amount of money that we could actually put towards that debt every month, commit to it, set it on autopilot as well. So every month I would make the first of the month that debt repayment go out. We paid our bills. We also paid that debt. So I couldn't touch it. I couldn't dip into it for other things, but it also told me the exact amount of time it would take to pay off that debt. So that again, it gave me a goal and a hope that I knew if I consistently paid that amount, we would be debt free by a certain amount of months ahead. So really the second strategy as well, we've got a plan in place of how we think we can tackle debt, how long it's going to take us, but I like to call this going cold turkey. And it simply is looking at that budget again with the eyes of what magic could we actually pull out of the bag to really tackle this debt a little bit quicker without life actually suffering in any way. After all, as I said, debt isn't something that should make you feel bad. However, the quicker we get rid of that debt, the more time without that obligation we give back to ourselves. More money in your pocket right now. We simply looked at every single outgoing cost and said, do we truly need this? Or could we actually go cold turkey for 30 days to test if we need it or not? And I always put that little bit out of, if we just test for a week or 30 days, if we enjoy it or miss it but we can always add it back in our life. You give the power back into your hands of whether that financial obligation actually makes sense to you right now. Anything like gym memberships, magazine subscriptions, perhaps even how much you're spending on your food budget. Look and see could I go seven days, 30 days, even two months or three months without that. Make a commitment to try it if it's too painful though of course we can re-add it but often you find that though you've taken away from your budget it might seem painful at the start, a little bit uncomfortable you actually very quickly start to adapt to that new way of life. If, as I said, and I'll stress this, if you find that you actually prefer life though with the item, by all means add it in. But this is a way for us to really test what do we truly need and what could we go without, perhaps for only a short period of time to give benefit to something longer term. The next strategy, after we know we've got a debt plan, we've really stretched it to see how much we could actually pay back, how quickly we could do that, is I use a technique called tracking money. Now this simply involves going really old school. So I'm not talking about doing anything fancy on the computer. It really just involves a notebook and a pen. It's one of the key mindset tools that I actually use to analyze where is our money going every month. I do it every couple of months. It's one of the things I actually use to refresh myself about being mindful with my spending choices. Now it simply is you get a notebook and a small cheap notebook will do or a piece of paper that you keep with you at all times and you simply write down every single time you spend or you get money in your life. So even if you find 20 pence on the street, I would record it. If you're paying for your lunch on your card, tap it cash, credit card, whatever you're using, you record it. You record the date, what you spent the item on and how much by. Now the objective is not to then analyze it right there and then. You would simply look at it once a month to take away the emotion, but see actually where your money is going. You can do this with a couple of apps as well, but the reason I 
I say having a notebook, it's because that extra step of taking out your notebook and your pen soon after you've made that purchase to record it is a little bit of mindset. It's the extra obligation to make sure you actually want to spend that money, record it in that way. I find it really useful as well because we record not only how much we spend, but how much it comes into our life. It makes you aware again of money being this unlimited resource that I've talked about. Money isn't simply one way that you simply get it once a month and then you spend it. A lot of money comes our way naturally in life. We're being rewarded for the value we give to others perhaps, you have a side business, or simply if you find money on the street, somebody gives you a gift. The great thing about tracking as well, every time you receive money, you then have a choice. You then have a choice to simply send it back out on something that you want, or because you have these particular goals about paying off money faster than you perhaps would have in the past, you could then direct it to that particular cause. It's giving you that accountability level with your money, a really simple technique that I have found immensely useful in my life. The next strategy as well that helped us to pay off debt really quickly was basically becoming a bit of a geek with an Excel spreadsheet. And you can of course do this with paper budgeting instead, but simply every single week or every single month, absolutely the least, because Become acquainted with how much money is actually going out the door. Have fun with it, test them, do calculations in terms of if I brought in an extra £50 tomorrow or £100 this month, if I did this to our debt, how would that leave us? Add in that element of excitement actually getting rid of the debt and as I say, become a bit of a geek with an Excel spreadsheet or a budget plan to see actually how those small changes in lifestyle or bringing in more money in your life allows you to radically change your future. The next strategy is a very practical one now. And when you've got debt, you need to also consider what is the most efficient way to do this. So that's really looking at essentially a couple of ways of repayment. There's the snowball method, the avalanche method, and there's also my method called the 10% rule. So with the snowball method, that actually means that you would list all your debts, smallest to largest, and you would simply attack the smallest in size first, regardless of any of the interest payments that are actually on those debts. So the smallest debt you would put all your efforts to plus making the minimum payments on the rest of the debts. And if you've ever heard of Dave Ramsey over in the US, he champions the snowball method for this reason of paying off debt. Because we're paying the smallest debt first, regardless of what the interest rate is, put all our efforts on that, then of course what will happen is that debt will be paid off the quickest compared to all the rest of the debts. So we of course get that great sense of achievement through paying off a debt really fast. We then put our efforts towards the next biggest debt. And of course what you would do is the same amount you've been paying to all your debts, you would then use to attack the second smallest debt. Now why it's called the snowball method is because we started with the smallest amount of debt, then made that grow to the next one. Every time we actually get rid of debt, because we're using the collective same total amount of money that was paying off all our debts at the start, that snowball, that amount we're tacking at the debt consistently is getting bigger and bigger. The avalanche method, however, considers interest rate on the debt. So actually how much money is that debt actually? Actually costing you long term because if we're looking about this mathematically we kind of want more money in our pocket long term so we want to attack the debt that's actually costing us the most every single month we're not paying it off so simply you would line up all your debts according to the interest rate based on their size as well there's a little bit of calculations involved I'd really recommend using a spreadsheet or some kind of calculator to do that for you but then you would simply attack the debt that's actually costing you the most amount of money every single month long term you would attack that first and then meet the minimum payments of the rest. Then when that debt is paid off, I'd recommend using that lump sum that you've been paying off the same amount from your budget to then put towards the next interest rate debt. Now, I like to also throw in my 10% rule into the mix here. And that's where I say whatever financial debt I have, we do this on our mortgage. And especially when we had those extra consumer debt, we made the minimum payments plus 10% of the monthly amount as a default. So as you see, when you make the minimum payments on debt, the bank is really allowing you to pay off a little bit of the debt, but more often than not, it's actually the majority is interest payment only. So effectively, you're never eating into the capital that you actually borrowed. You're basically just giving the bank back their profit. And so with the actual obligation of even just 10% more, you know you're digging into that capital. That small amount every single month is actually making a dent on the total amount that you actually own. 
loan. So using my 10% rule, perhaps on those minimum payment dates that we're meeting just while we consider the snowball or the avalanche method, then means that on those other dates, although they might not be the active choice to throw lots of money at, we can actually be making a small indent into the money that's due. As I touched upon, we actually do this with our mortgage default. We've reduced our 25 year mortgage down to 22 years just by simply putting 10% extra every month in there. Small amount works out roughly the same as a couple of takeaways a month, but we know we're getting time back on our side. So my final strategy for you, if you're looking to pay off debt incredibly quickly, would also be consider cheap versus frugality. So the two words that we hear a lot in the financial blogging and vlogging world, but really there is a key difference between being cheap and being frugal. And I'm very much on the frugality side. So it's really regardless of what we're choosing to spend our money in, if it adds value, then that is a very valid choice for how we're actually sending our money into the world. Cheap, however, is where we're actually looking to just simply not spend any money at all. Everything has to be as low cost as possible, regardless of if it's something that brings us value or essential in our life. That's where I'd really stress, if you're looking to pay back debt very quickly, don't err on the side of being cheap just for the sake of it. It can bring a lot of suffering into your life that simply isn't necessary. And that's where I really say, although you might have debt that you're wanting to attack, really encourage you to think about the frugality, the conscious money choices side, rather than being simply as cheap as possible to get more money to throw at the debt. Make sure that life is still enjoyable, that you're not suffering. Do as much as you can to pay off that debt. Learn about driving real wealth in your life, such as investing, creating businesses. You can still do all these fantastic things to develop yourself so that you are ready to bring more money into your life. Just because you have debt does not mean that life has to stop. So today's video, as always, I hope I've given you a lot of information I believe really can help you. All these methods I have tried, I've tested, I know they work. I also know that they work long term as well because I'm simply still applying them in our own life. I would love if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. As always, there is tons of resources over my blog, mamafurfur.com, touched upon my spreadsheet system that you can go and check out if it would help you if you're paying off debt go and have a look. I know that it helped us a huge amount having that spreadsheet accountability. It really changed our life. So go and check it out just in case it could also help you. Mamafurfur.com also has a lot of resources about my e-course, which is all about budgeting smart. It's called Budget Success Bootcamp. You can go and check it out as well. And if you'd like to follow me behind the scenes to see what I get up to in everyday life, you can check me out on Instagram at mamafurfur. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments in the below if you've enjoyed today's video. And if you fancy finding out more about investing, Investing, perhaps using the stock market, how to set up investment ISIS, how to pay off your mortgage quicker. You can go and check out my best of playlist as well. Tons of videos there that I think you would really enjoy. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.